so let's talk about disease of the arteries and one of the most common diseases is hypertension and hypertension is a chronic disease slow developing and as the nicknamed a silent killer because patient may not experience any symptoms um, while developing hypertension and uh, it also may be related to uh, development of cerebrovascular cardiovascular arteriosclerotic and kidney disease uh, certainly this is a uh, leading cause of stroke hypertensive stroke and heart failure and uh, it's preventable and uh, treatable when we're talking about hypertension we have to distinguish between primary or essential and non-essential primary hypertension is really no certain cause knowing why this happening it's idiopathic with gradual onset and an another again name is essential hypertension JNC guidelines important to know and uh, these are published in this link if you click you can find it and review it and essentially what we want you to know the parameters of hypertension evaluation as well as treatment risk factors for hypertension there are numerous risk factors and of course smoking arteriosclerotic disease and obesity sedentary lifestyle uh, lack of exercise and there are other numerous uh, uh, risk factors however one of the common risk factors is heredity as well as age and age is explained very uh, simply age influence on hypertension because with age the elasticity and ability of the vessels to adapt to higher volume of the blood decreases which results in increased pressure of the blood again hypertension may be treated by lifestyle changes decreasing the sodium chloride or table salt uh, intake may lead to tremendous results in your patient with no absolutely financial expense from them as well as pharmaceuticals again jnc7 will guide you through pharmaceutical treatment of hypertension at this time and uh, will guide you through the classes and this is not the focus of this course but in your pharmacology course you certainly will be exposed to the algorithms that you need to know to treat hypertension arteriosclerosis and atherosclerosis is a disease of loss of elasticity and thickening of artery wall or hardening of the wall the component of this is development of fibrous uh, plaque which uh, consists of uh, fatty and lipid materials in the wall of artery in arteriosclerosis the vessels that affected are coronary arteries cerebral arteries and aorta and peripheral arteries so what's the danger with atherosclerosis that first of all the um, capacity to uh, pass more blood is decreases however the main problem here that the arteriosclerotic um, plaque may rapture and uh, cause um, adverse events such as myocardial infarction and or stroke atherosclerosis again there are two major categories controllable or non-controllable factor of course heredity age sex 
and the history of diabetes are non-controllable factor. On the other hand, diabetes may be certainly modified and uh, lead to uh, lesser risk of arteriosclerosis development. Controllable factors, diet, introduction of exercise, reduction of stress, again, cigarette smoking and hypertension also can contribute to atherosclerosis. So again, you may uh, spend a couple of more minutes with your patient trying to introduce the important uh, importance of modification of controllable factors and uh, p try to do it before an adverse event occurred versus after. Uh, atherosclerosis diagnosis, of course, the best way will be the imaging study, such as arteriogram and Doppler. However, even uh, increase in blood pressure may be suggestive of atherosclerosis. Um, if uh, atherosclerosis is becoming advanced and patient is, is experiencing um, stable or um, angina or uh, unstable angina, uh, CABG surgery may be indicated and um, of, um, basically the uh, occluded arteries will be removed and replaced and plaque maybe also, um, plaque will be removed with that. And another option is the angioplasty without actual removal of the arteries and performed by, by a, a cardiac cat. Peripheral vascular disease is um, certainly a condition can impair the circulation and certainly may be a big hinder on someone's quality of life. And um, intermittent claudification is one of the hallmarks of the disease and um, muscle cramps or cramps, uh, leg pain, lower uh, like calf pain that occurs with activity, with walking and relieved with rest can be mistakenly described uh, or named by the patient as uh, arthritis even. However, it, if uh, it's muscle cramp or muscle uh, pain with walking and uh, which is relieved by activity with, I'm sorry, which is relieved by rest, it may be indicative of PVD. So, here the arteriosclerotic plug in arteries supplying blood to legs it, and uh, the treatment may include a bypass as well as just uh, angioplasty. But however, um, this can be uh, uh, fairly complicated and sometimes life-threatening condition and needs to be addressed. Peripheral vascular disease uh, treatment includes uh, endarotectomy, basically cleaning the affected vessel, and uh, it needs to be done uh, relatively urgently because if the complete occlusion of the vessel occurs, patient may start losing uh, uh, losing the tissues uh, secondary to necrosis and amputation uh, may be necessary such as uh, usually when necrosis occurs it's uh, painless the affected extremity or toes do not have obviously sensation and uh, some nurses not only novice nurses but maybe uh, very um, maybe imagining and thinking that this is a very painful condition for a patient, but however, at this point when necrosis occurred, uh, there is really no pain. Pain 
a uh, fairly good symptom in this situation that uh, may be indicative that treatment still may be helpful as well as uh, treatment is indicative. Aneurysms uh, is a result of the weakening of the wall of artery and may be uh, leading to a bulge or rupture and uh, aneurysm are asymptomatic they are maybe something like a bruit or some aneurysm may be palpated and abdominal aortic aneurysm may be palpated on a, on a very thin individual however you guys remember from very very uh, beginners courses that uh, palpating abdominal pulsating mass is contraindicated you certainly do not want to do it because of the risk of rupture and if there is an abdominal palpating mass you certainly want to avoid and the next step in your diagnostic will be ultrasound to uh, see what it is is it aneurysm or something else aneurysm need to be repaired before rupture and usually the treatment successful when if rupture occurred the treatment uh, is um, almost impossible to perform because the loss of blood will be very significant and the usually chances of survival may be increased if this occurred in hospital setting or very close to the healthcare institution where repair may be performed but otherwise if this happened at home or in the field the chances of survival very low. Coronary artery disease is a consequence of arteriosclerosis and uh, may be in, uh, one of the most uh, devastating diseases and it's the single leading cause of death in the United States. It's not the worldwide leading cause of death. Atherosclerosis uh, will lead to narrowing of arteries that supply the blood to myocardium and uh, if atherosclerotic plaque ruptures it may lead to uh, inflammatory response and uh, development of the um, platelet plug and uh, ischemia and infarction. So this is a very simplistic way to describe it. However, um, again, uh, the main reason of why we are so concerned about it, it's the myocardial infarction, not just we care that how uh, wide or narrow arteries is, as long as they can supply blood to myocardium. On the other hand, sudden a decrease of the blood supply to myocardium may certainly lead to devastating consequences such as infarction and necrosis and death. The progressive narrowing of vessels will lead to ischemia of heart muscle and symptoms and uh, when we're talking about this we need to learn to distinguish between stable and unstable angina or angina stable when we see a pattern of repeating symptoms such as patient may experience chest pain with walking certain amount of time or certain distance and which is relieved by rest or nitroglycerin unstable angina is when usual interventions that lead to uh, that lead to relief of the symptom don't work. So let's say a patient does take his two nitroglycerins and there is no relief. Of course, the unstable angina is medical emergency. Uh, EMS has to be called or within hospital setting appropriate protocol should be initiated. So occlusion may progress slowly or suddenly secondary to thrombus or embolus. Basically, occlusion may occur when the plaque ruptures and uh, the thrombus develop, platelet plug developed, and the blood supply will be discontinued 
immediately. When we see a slow progression, this may not be such a big danger for the patient, or it still needs to be addressed, but patient may develop a um, patient may develop a uh, accessory vascular system which will be uh, supplying blood to and creating a natural bypass. Again, rupture of the plug may be prevented and um, also the development of the plug may be prevented A by lifestyle, B by including the anti-cholesterol drugs such as statin. Statin, although you read in literature many reports which are some, somewhat controversial and that may lead to side effects such as muscle pain, weakness. On the other hand, statins not only prevent the increase in the size of plaque, but also they stabilize existing plaque. So it's uh, relatively rare that patient, and of course this can occur, but it's relatively rare when patient is on statin drug, they have myocardial infarction because statins have stabilizing properties and also anti-inflammatory properties.